Hey, 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 hey! Subscribing and liking the vids does go a long way on the channel. But what, what if you want to support me even further? And I have something for you, Acolytes. I have a Patreon with four tiers going up to £30 is the max, so easily affordable. And if you want to go a step further. Subscribing to my Patreon will give you many special benefits like early access to my videos and behind the scenes content. So, you are getting many gifts in return for supporting me and the channel. So the link is in the description and thank you for helping me in the long run. Let's get on with the video! <laughs> Roll it. Just saying now, I will be calling him Vlad from now on, apart from the times when I had to address his full name. Imagine saying this every time. Anyway, Radoslaw Makurzowicz was born on January 31st in 1911 in Krakow, Poland. Which wouldn't be Poland at the time, but the Great German Empire! It's the Liebast Imperium Totten Freeland! <coughs> Excuse me, yeah. Poland wasn't Poland yet, but from the post-Prussian German Empire. It's not known where he grew up in Krakow or what his early childhood was like, but what he definitely probably doesn't remember was his mum dying at age three. So you can tell what led to his serial killing ways. It wasn't fatherless behaviour, it was motherless behaviour. So he didn't live in the German Empire for long as it fell in 1918 at the end of the First World War and he became the Wilma Republic. He grew up entirely with his dad who was a printer by profession so it was bringing in the money or not as I can go print off paper right now. See paper. Well it was only the 20th century so I assume it was a sought after job. Otherwise you ain't bringing in the dough especially for being a single parent for a growing child. Later in the years as Vlad was growing up in Free Poland while the Wilma Republic was suffering from being completely useless during Germany's economic hardships and so useless they allowed an angry painter with a funny moustache to rise. Vlad was going for education and enrolled in the Jagonion University to study law. Well, two sides of the same coin there. He didn't last long though as he dropped out. I don't know why the reason, but the one known reason, at least to me, is because of the draft in the September campaign of the invasion of Poland, which you'll know how that turned out. Yep. But what was weird that he befriended the human resources chief of the local Gestapo called Rudolf Arnold. So he was incredibly sus on how he did this. Did he find Jews or Roma people hiding to do this? Not explained, but he did manage to get the Kanakart which is a basic identity paper used by the Third Reich for those who want to really walk about. Well, not for some as they'll be on the next. Yep, out. He started to make a living by trading gold, diamonds, etc. illegally. And this is in the midst of World War II where he started to commit these murders. It's not known what caused that to start killing, it could be a number of reasons. The loss of his mother and living with a single parent for most of his life, living in occupied Poland after Nazi Germany, or the biggest one, trading gold and diamonds illegally which will attract many enemies and will have to watch his back. His first victim was in 1943 was that of a gambler called Wiktor Zarnesecki, who was poisoned with tea. Ah, oh, hitman memories and immediately stripped over $1,200, which is weird, it's dollars and not right marks. But that's a story for another day. 
And if you notice, the killing was a simple robbing and a straight brutal murder, but these things always escalate. Especially for all the criminal like Vlad. Obviously after a while the Nazi occupation ended and replaced by another authoritarian government from Soviet to Russia. Vlad apparently retained the Polish Red Cross for his work. I don't know which work he was clearly friends with the Nazis, but it was work to the Russians apparently. He then worked as a wine seller and a driving instructor. It's not known if he was still trading gold and diamonds illegally. I feel like the Soviet Union will crack down on that sort of thing, you know, being seized, the means of production and all that. It's not known when all these other victims were, but the almost victim was Stanislaw Lupusonsky in 1955 in Warsaw, who he shot and wounded. But he managed to get away. Again, this also led to the downfall of Ted Bundy as someone who also managed to get away from him. They contacted the authorities, which led to a massive investigation in which they found his revolver. He used to kill his victims with and surviving victims recognised his face and he was taken into custody. Because of his economic standing and polite manner in Soviet Poland, he was dubbed the Gentleman Murderer. So Vlad was brought in for questioning, which didn't last long because as you know, it's the Soviet Union. It's not how they do things there. So Vlad was tortured and apparently blackmailed. Okay, don't know what they were blackmailing him with until he confessed to more murders. It's a rumour, but apparently he confessed up to 30 or more murders. Which as a robber slash killer would make sense as he, the need for more money would come before human life. But those supposed 30 more killings were never confirmed, so it could have been a lie to prop him up as a more vicious killer as he was. To help with the Soviet propaganda at the times. Vlad even claimed in court to have been beaten and blackmailed. So after the very fair trials of the Soviet Union, totally super, totally fair, super fair, totally fair, Vlad the Tsar, because of it, was sentenced to death by hanging five months later in January 29th, 1957, ironically two days before his birthday. And on that day, the hangman's moose, he dropped. The victims he left in his pursuit of money were the gambler who was his first victim, Viktor Zazaki, then Wadislaw Berliski, Joseph Thomas Zazakowi, millionaire Jose de Lawa, also with his wife Jadriga de Lawa, along with her sister Sofia Sawacha, and the supposed 30 unknown victims if he, if he indeed killed them too. So. This ends the dark tale of a polite seal killer, but he's the least demented person who we're going to have in this series. After all, he was only wanted money it seems. He always wanted more, crazy, sadistic things, necrophilia, rape, and more. So you see you next time when we dive into the past and just dissect these dark souls. Stay spooky.